Hey everybody, welcome to the first in a series of short videos introducing power cards. Uh, basically I'm calling this like Power Cards 101 as a series and uh, today we're going to be talking about the very basics of power cards. Uh, how you get it up and running, uh, how you create your first basic cards, and we'll go over uh, what tags are and the difference between tags and content and some of the rules for using them. So let's start with uh, how you get power cards added to your game. And I've got a very simple game here in the background. I've already got power cards loaded, but if I switch over to the settings and API scripts for my game, uh, power cards is listed in the dropdown Roll20 API library. So if we select power cards, we can select power cards here and add it to our game. I'm not going to do that because I'm using the development version of Power Cards, which I will go over and talk about as well. Uh, but that would be enough to get you started. So if you wanted to use the development version of Power Cards, I'll put a link in the description below to the development uh, um, GitHub server. And uh, you would create, instead of adding a uh, API this way, you would just go ahead and create a new script by clicking on new script here, which would open up a blank script window, call it power cards when it asks you for a name. And then you would copy the current code out of the development library and paste it into this window and hit save script. And then you would have the development version of power cards running. Uh, currently, as of what, uh, the 11th of July, uh, the power cards development version uh, only has a few changes uh, from the one that's on the one-click install. Uh, those are mostly uh, formatting changes. Uh, it will replace line breaks in some descriptions with uh, BR codes, the HTML code for a line, line break. And it will also add the odds, evens, and aces roll IDs. But we'll talk about those when we get to the roll IDs video. So that will get you up and running with power cards. So the next thing is how do you use them? So back in our game here in the chat window, um, to run any power card, uh, you start with exclamation point power, two open brackets, a space, uh, and then you need a tag followed by the content associated with that tag. And a tag is essentially a name for this line of the power card. All tags have to be unique across the entire card. Uh, there are ways to use the same name display, but have different tags. Uh, I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, but the simplest uh, card would just be minus minus, which indicates a tag. The tag name, which is name. And then whatever we want to call the card. We'll call this test card. And then we close off our curly braces to uh, complete the card. Now hit enter, and we see test card pops up on the side. Obviously, that's not very exciting, uh, but that is more or less the simplest power card we can come up with. But obviously, doing everything in the chat window here is not ideal. So let's pop open our macro editor. And uh, I normally do all of the macro editing in... Um, in Notepad++, uh, and then I'll copy and paste it into here. But uh, for the moment, we're just going to use um, the built-in macro editor because the cards we're going to make right now are going to be very small. So let's build our shell, which was power, two open curly braces, and two cur closed curly braces. Now you might note that when I did this in the chat window, I just strung everything together on one line. And that's fine. Uh, while spacing is important in a power card uh, line, line breaks themselves are not. They are not included as part of the card. Everything is dependent on the two minus signs uh, to designate a tag start and then the vertical bar after the tag name to designate the content. So what is a tag and what is content? As I said before, a tag is the name we're giving to this line on the card. So we'll, actually that's going to be confusing with the name. So we're just going to uh, call it the identifier for the line on the power card. 
So if we go back and we put our test card back in here, uh, to expand this card, we want to add new tags. And so, and we can call our tags anything we want. Uh, with a few exceptions, there are some reserved tag words that we'll talk about in either this or future videos. And a vertical bar ends the tag itself, and then we start the content for that tag. Uh, and the content is more or less freeform. You can uh, put in text, you can include uh, dice rolls, which we'll talk about in the next video. You can include um, uh, chat notation, uh, so the at selected, and then an attribute value. Uh, it should be noted, however, that that is not processed by power cards. That is done by the chat server itself. So power cards never sees that uh, at notation. It just gets the result of the lookup that the chat server performs. So let's go ahead and hit test on here. We'll see we've added another line to the card that says hello, hello world. Hello being the tag and hello world being the content. So uh, let's talk about what we can do with tags to modify how they're displayed. So there are several tag modifiers and the first one is an exclamation point. If I put an exclamation point in front of the tag it will hide the tag itself, but not the content. So if I run this again, we'll see uh, the hello in bold is missing. And uh, that's, so you know, if you wanna block a text uh, description of some kind, uh, you can do that without having a uh, tag name in front of it. The next modifier is indent. And that is a caret followed by a number. One is the shallowest indent. So if we run that, we'll see uh, a small space in front of hello. And uh, numbers go up to nine as the widest indent. And uh, a lot of times that's not gonna leave a whole lot of room on your card for your content, but there may be cases where it's useful. So you can, you can go any number between one and nine, which will uh, indent that whole line on the power card. And if your line is longer than will fit on the screen, it will wrap and continue the indent. So test that real quick and you'll see it, uh, it wraps around and does continue the indent. It doesn't go back to the left side. The next one we want to talk about is the repeat tag. So if we wanted to output this line five times and the autocomplete is going to mess us up there, but we add a number sign and the count of how many times we wanted to repeat. And now we will see hello five times. And uh, even though it looks like the same tag is being used, it's just outputting this line five times. So we don't run into a problem with tag names there. Uh, if we want to hide both the tag and the content, and you might say, well, why would you ever want to do this? There are actually a couple of reasons or a couple of situations where you'd want to do this. Uh, and I'll probably talk about those at some point in the future. But prefixing the tag with a dollar sign will hide the entire line. So we won't see anything output by that hello line. And the last one I want to talk about is the same name tag. So let's go ahead and set up uh, hello and we'll say Hello world one, let's just copy this three times and we'll do two and three. Now, because we have the same tag name, hello, for all three lines, only one of these is gonna end up in the actual power card because power cards internally takes the tag names you give it, creates a hash table inside the script and then goes through that table and outputs the lines. Every time you redefine the tag, you overwrite the previous hash table entry. So if we run this, we'll see hello world three as the only output. And like I said, that's because the first and the second one got overridden by the third one. If we want to use the same tag name more than once, we need to append asterisk and then a number. And so this time we will see um, hello world one, hello world two, and hello world three. And if you don't include a space 
after uh, the tag name and before the number sign, you can see you'll get some strange uh, artifacting in the tag itself. So best practice is always to include the space and then when we run this, it should show as expected. Hello three times and then hello world one, two, three after that. Uh, that is just an artifact of the way the same name tag is processed. Uh, so it's best to put the space after it. So uh, let's see, what else do we need to go over the basics of a power card? Uh, check my notes here. Let's talk about formatting. So when we output text, uh, we have several different options. Uh, we can we can left justify text by surrounding it with tilde L's. We can center text by surrounding it with tilde C's. And we can right justify text by surrounding it with tilde R's. So when we see that, uh, we just see it staggered across the display area. And this is a perfect example where you might want to um, uh, hide the tag with the exclamation point uh, modifier so that you can create a title uh, a subtitle for your uh, card uh, maybe a new section whatever and you don't want to see the tag name so you can use the exclamation point to hide it but let's go back and pull that back in because these aren't the only um, uh, formatting options we have if we surround and I delete the center left and right because we'll just end up getting confused here uh, if we surround text by a pair of asterisks, that text will get bolded. So we run this, and we see world is in bold. If we surround it by underscores, we will get an underlined text. And if we surround it by slashes, we will get italicized text. So world bold, world underlined, and world italics. Uh, what if we combine those? So we'll do a fourth line. Oop, hello. Four. All right. So now we should have underlined, bolded, and italicized text for the last world there. Uh, that gives us several different formatting options we can use. Uh, there are a few more, however, so let's take a look at um, uh, a lot of times, and you'll see this later on when we start doing dice rolls, but uh, power cards will put a yellow uh, border. Let's go ahead and just do one real quick. I won't cover the syntax for our roll, but we'll I'll save that for another video. But we will go ahead and say, player rolls one. So 1d20 to attack. So the, the power cards internally will roll that 1d20 and output the result inside a roll uh, format box here. You can format any text as a roll format. Uh, let's go ahead and take our, one of our hello worlds here and make a fifth one. And again, indenting doesn't really matter. I just like to keep things neat. Um, and you do that by surrounding text with a open square bracket exclamation point and exclamation point close square bracket. And when we run this, we'll see that uh, world in hello five, and I'm going to go ahead and hide this entire roll for now, just by putting a dollar sign in front of it. We'll see world exclamation point five will be formatted as if that were a dice roll for power cards. Uh, we have a couple of other simple things we can do. Uh, if we add uh, a double caret to a line, that produces a line break. So we'll have hello and then world five on the second line. Our other, other option we have is to use three tildes and that will produce a horizontal rule. So I test this one more time. And I'm going to remove this attack because the thing is now larger than the macro screen. Uh, one more time, we see hello, uh, line break, a horizontal rule, and then world five on the last line. 
So you can see how you could use this to create a design, you know, a, a nicely formatted card that has different sections. Those sections might have headers uh, centered above them with bold text, things like that. That um, those are all the formatting options we have in Power Cards uh, for text right inside a tag. So I'm going to wrap up this video. This is the basics of creating a Power Card. And in the next video, we're going to talk about formatting the card itself and how we would add avatars and titles and subtitles and emotes and that kind of thing. So I will see you in the next video.